guys welcome back to the abs grand tournament uh we are halfway through the day we have eight matches for the day and the fifth one where it will be between nihilum's ties versus cloud nine ecop subtle how are you doing today yeah, I'm doing pretty good. We've, uh, we've seen some fantastic series so far, a lot of great players. A um, couple of uh, exhausting matchups to, to pound our way through, but for the most part, some some really enjoyable Hearthstone, some really good matches. And uh, this one promises to be no different. Um, two great players, mm -hmm. one of them who I know you know exceptionally well. Uh, Tice on a bit of a tear recently, definitely on a, an upswing in his Hearthstone career, been doing incredibly well. Yeah, he's uh, ranked one in Gosso Gamers World Ranking right now so he's really on a win streak and he will probably not be taking this game as light, uh, lightly right he wants to win he wants to cement that first um first place in gosu gamers ranking uh but uh, as we know i mean i know and you all guys know too right now because i will tell you about it uh, tice is at life coach's place uh, because he's preparing for the next blizzcon stage so he'll be playing um from what i know from his tablet from his ipad and because of that there will be no camera and uh yeah but he will be fully focused on the game against ecop and ecop is kind of on the opposite side of the um swing you know when it comes to uh position when it comes to ties and ecop eco wants to bounce back mm -hmm. uh he didn't have a really big uh sh showing lately mm -hmm. on, when it comes to tournaments so yeah i think he will be taking this seriously too and we have the matchups i mean the have we have deck lists not that good, it's Dex. <laughs> oh god. Third, third time lucky though, but we got that. Yeah. Third time the charm. Tys is bringing Mage, Warrior and Warlock. Ecop is bringing Paladin, Druid and Warlock. No Warrior whatsoever. <laughs> wow. Oh, there you go. Lothar's very happy, I'm very sad. I, I think I'm one of the few people left that does still really enjoy watching uh, Patron Warrior matches, but no such luck for me in this in this lineup. But still, Ekop going with a, a very consistent uh, tried and true lineup. Paladin, Druid, and presumably Hanlock, although uh, Ekop is um, kind of well known for for playing aggro a bit himself. Uh, I've definitely seen him play a lot of Zoo, and I've also played him, seen him play some uh, very strange control warlock builds along the lines of uh, the old Dark Wanix um, OTK decks and things like that. Um, mm -hmm. So he could be coming out with uh, with something special, but I don't know, I'd still expect to see a fairly standard handlock here in but this lineup. What's um, what's Zoo like stand right now in the metagame? I, to be honest, mm. I have played a lot of ladder and lately, when I was streaming, and I have seen maybe two zoos in general. Everyone else is playing handlock, mm -hmm. or some variation of uh, demon lock, mm -hmm. but no zoo inside at all. Almost no zoo inside at all. Yeah, no, I agree with you. Zoo definitely seems to be at one of the the weakest points that it's ever been in the meta game. It's hard for that deck to ever go away just because of how um, how ever present the strategy is. You know, you just mm -hmm. you, you play mm -hmm. out your your hand of efficient minions and you tap to draw more cards. Like it sounds like a really simple, straightforward strategy, but because of how powerful the Warlock Hero power is, that strategy will pretty much never go away entirely. Um, but mm -hmm. I, I definitely agree with you that it's a, a, a low point right now in terms of its its fluctuating power level. It's really a, a rare sight to behold because we all thought that Zoo is never going out from the, being a top tier deck mm -hmm. because the strategy is so consistent, right? Yeah. You play minions, you deal damage, you draw more cards, you play more minions, yeah. you just refill the board, and Doom Guard, Void Core are such important cards in this deck. They basically put more pressure on the, on the board instantly, and that's something like really hard to um, like like to play around. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, I was really surprised by Zoo being on a downfall right now. Anyway, we'll be starting into the game, but before, I just wanted to remind you guys that this channel is a new, brand new channel. This is the first tournament going on from ABS, but it's not the last. And we'll be seeing a lot of more tournaments in different games too. In Counter-Strike, Heroes of the Storm, not only Hearthstone. So if you're interested in that, be sure to click that follow button under the stream. So you'll be notified about next uh, next tournaments going on. And also remember about tweeting with the hashtag ABSGT. 
So here we are, game one, and it looks like a tempo mage from Tice going up against the, uh, there we go, Secrets Paladin. Uh, could have just mm -hmm. been a standard aggressive mm -hmm. Paladin, but the Secrets come into hand and confirm Ooh. that we have the Mysterious Challenger. And Flame Waker Arcane Missile is one of the absolute best answers to this deck, with the coin as well. That's devastating. Um, yeah, really huge pickup from Tice in his opening hand. And we saw in uh, Echop's Mulligan, he's actually playing a Blood Knight in this deck. How do you feel about that inclusion, Lothar? It's really good in current metagame when you can see how much uh, people are playing Divine Shields in general and even they're playing Cog Hammers yeah. in most of the Paladin decks. So Blood Knight seems like a no-brainer in most of the Paladins. So really cool. Mm -hmm. um, Ekop trying to decide here between his two secrets. I like the Redemption because it looks like you have a nice curve of, of minions that you don't mind getting redeemed. You're going to have to find something to do on turn three, so you'll probably have to try and avoid hero powering as best as possible. But if either that mini bot or the Shredder, and now that Haunted Creeper even is totally fine, if any of those minions get redeemed, then uh, you would have got pretty good value out of your one mana secret. So I like going mm -hmm, for the Redemption mm -hmm. first there. Yep. Good choice. Is that a Baldi Raider? It is. Oh, wow. Right. That's a pretty yeah, solid pickup. That's, that's a really insane pickup. It's better than, um, well, it's not better than the... Yes! Demon. Right. Uh, I mean, it, it kind of is, right? Because you don't have to ping yourself in the face. Uh, well, yeah, you can ping something else in the yeah, face. Yeah, so it's uh, actually better than the... But it's not a demon, so it doesn't have the interaction with demon cards, right? Yeah, but Sa like... Let's for, say for that Ties will get a second unstable portal into Void Color. Okay, yeah, sure. <laughs> or uh, or, uh, or spells, just Mulgan. Spell like... into Demon Heart, right? Oh, yeah, or something like that. Yeah. But Spell Slinger into Sacrificial Pact for your opponent uh -huh. would be really bad. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's not try and work out all the permutations of the Casino Mage, because we'll be here forever. Um, but, yeah, we do see that at some point, Tice has the ability to unleash the uh, crazy Flame Waker turn. Uh, but it looks like for now he's just going to go with making a 6-6. It does involve spending the coin. It does have a lot of value with that Flame Waker, but playing a 6-6 playing a on turn 3 seems to make it worth it, right? Especially when your opponent can only have a Blessing of Kings or Trucible Champion. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, I don't like that. Because the Trucible Champion makes it really awkward. I mean, I don't mind Blessing of Kings, right? right? But Trucible Champion would make this turn really awkward. Mm -hmm. You have to deal with it instantly, right? Because if it goes like bigger and bigger... I mean, if it goes to 8-8 next turn, you can still Blessing of Kings your piloted Shredder, and that's a better trade for you because you still retain the 2-drop afterwards than just using the Shielded Minibot this turn. So I think it's okay to let it go up to 8-8. Um, I don't mind this play. And like this board that he's generated with the Redemption in play is just so terrible. Ooh, Flame Strike. Strike indeed. Interesting. So we go face, we prop the Noble Sacrifice, and we're actually going to get the 2-1 minion uh, redeemed. Uh, I didn't notice that he actually played the, the Noble Sacrifice as well. It actually... Yeah, it was the turn one. Uh, no, he played the Redemption on turn one. He, oh, played, so it he, was... he played the Noble Sac on turn three alongside yeah, the yeah, yeah. Creeper, which, honestly, I don't know if I like too much, just because of how high value your board was for Redemption. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, kind of interesting, but it, it plays around things like Frostbolt, I guess, um, even if you do have the, the Noble Sacrifice in play, so hard to say exactly what his thinking was with playing the secret. You know, even just spending the mana to be efficient has some merits to it. Will he go for the Master of Battle this time? I mean, you probably have to. Um, and but then again, the Kvaldi will just go kind of out of range next turn. Right. Hmm. It's interesting change of pace each single turn. Because if you play Blessing of Kings, mm -hmm. you have to attack with the Palter Shredder into that. Because why would you play Blessing of Kings on your Haunted Creeper, right? Yep. Yep. It dies anyway, mm -hmm. and you don't want to do that. If you play Master of a Battle, you have to go for the Hero Power, and then you would sacrifice your minions into the Kvaldil with attack of your Hero Power. Yeah. Hmm. But then you're really weak to like board clears, right? But you saw coin, so you don't anticipate uh, the flame waker. He's just going face, just no respect for the quality of at all. Um, and there is a possible absolute blowout here for uh, for Tice if he gets if he decides to go for the flame waker play and gets uh, a good run of uh, of RNG off the uh, the arcane missiles and the flame waker shots. He can potentially swing this board right around on its head. The, when you go for it, right? 
Yeah, I mean, the downside is that you don't get to ping this turn, so you're missing out on the plus two, plus two. Uh, but the Inspire doesn't really matter that yeah, much. Yeah, and also, if, I mean, if you just ping this turn anyway, then what's the rest of your play? Like, Mana Worm, ping, Frostbolt? That actually might be the play he's going for. I mean, Mana Worm happens either way. Yes. So this could be Mana Worm, mm -hmm. Flame Waker, Arcane Missiles, or it could be Mana Worm, ping, Frostbolt. We'll just have to see which line Tice is favoring right now. Yeah, that's true. I mean, I would favor the... Oh, he goes for the ping. I would go for the um, for the Flame Waker, but Flame Waker next turn mm -hmm. with Frostbolt and Arcan Missiles. Is he actually? Is seems he? reasonable okay. too. No, he's going to use the Frostbolt to clear out the Pilot Shredder. Um, so he is reducing the uh, the amount of value of his Flame Waker, but he does still have that Arcane Missiles, which is a pretty good backup plan. Um, and yeah, we we should see Ecop trade out the Mana Worm here um, after he plays the Mysterious Challenger just to. Uh, Make sure that 10-8 is getting tanked by the Noble Sacrifice. I don't see any way you ignore the Mana Worm this turn. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you have to kill it, that's true. And even sacrifice the 1-1, so that's a good call on this. Ooh. Uh, actually, okay, never mind. I mean, there's merit to this as well. Just, you know, not making reads about what your opponent might have. This spreads your board as wide as possible, so Competitive Spirit gets as much value as it possibly can. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I can understand this line of play as well, but... <sighs> There are many, many possibilities this turn. Wow. And you're dead to avenge Blessing of Kings, no matter what. Mm -hmm. Because you can't attack, so you the Kvaldir will be basically useless this turn. Yeah. It's stopped by <laughs> just really sh <laughs> slow, small minions. It's, like, it's a damn shame to watch. At yeah. 12, attack minion will be stopped by... Wow, those oh, arcane wow. missiles though. That was that absolutely was appalling. All those 1-1s one on the board and arcane missiles flame waker only cleared one of them. That's uh that's pretty ridiculous. Yep, nothing changed on the board. Yep. I mean it's even bigger than it was. Mm hmm He's gonna go ahead and clear the noble sack here with the twelve ten. Wow, that's game. That's yep. uh, enough damage to clear the mage from the board. Yep. We saw uh, the Argent Squire earlier tanking the hit from the 8-8 um, Mountain Giant, but yeah, mm -hmm. e even better Noble Sacrifice there, soaking up a 12-10 Valdir Raider. Well, that was quick. I, I think that the that the um, Flame Waker played on the turn when he would have gone for the Echo Missiles with the Man of Venom would have been way better. Yeah, I agree with pinging, you. Pinging and just going with the Kvaldir to insane, you know, amount of attack. Yeah. That's true. I mean, I can understand the mentality of getting greedy with that Valdir Raider, um, mm -hmm, just mm -hmm. because it does seem like it has the potential to just solo the game. Um, but I think, like, when you're playing against Mysterious Challenger Paladin, you know, the way they're going to win is playing Mysterious Challenger on turn six most of the time. Um, and in that situation with the play he went, he has to realize he loses to turn six Mysterious Challenger 100% of the time. Yeah, that's um, true. So yeah, going with the Flame Waker clearing play with the Arcane Missiles seems like it might have given him more of a chance to be competitive on the board if the Mysterious Challenger did come down. Um, yeah, so just interesting line of play from Tice there, choosing to be greedy with his Flame Waker, and it just ended up coming down way too late and just having no impact on the game at all. That's true. And now we see first time for, of the day. First time of the day we'll be seeing a matchup between the hand blocks. Mm. And this is an interesting matchup because usually the player that goes lower on the hp first will yep. win the match yeah um yeah molten giant shadow flame is just one of the most powerful things in the matchup for sure um and if you give your opponent too much value from that by you know being too aggressive overextending on the board and lowering their health um you're likely to just be in trouble uh, wow well, uh, molten giant shadow flame just drawn into hand as we were talking about it yep. um but we do see this is quite probably not an exact mirror so we see the Malganis in Ekop's hand, which suggests that he's playing the demons along with the Doom Guard. He obviously is playing the demons. And then in Tice's hand, we see a Sludge Belcher, which suggests that he isn't playing the demons. And Second Hellfire also suggests that he's playing just more of a classic handlock list. Um, so it's not quite a true mirror match. There is a little bit of a, a wrinkle in it as they're playing slightly different archetypes. But for the most part, it's two decks with the, uh, you know, pretty much the same strategy, right? Yeah, that's true. A very good analysis. As usual, subtle on spot. Um, so we see uh, Ancient Watcher come down, and unfortunately for Tice, just nothing to play on turn four. Normally, well, he can draw it still. Uh, nope. No, but no, no. Tice has just played his turn four. Oh yeah, sorry. Yeah. This is Echo. 
Um, but again, Echot misses as well. So this is a very unusual uh, handlock mirror. Normally the player who's going first is slightly favored if they're able to get their first big minion down early. Uh, if you get a Mountain Giant down first and your opponent doesn't have the big game hunter, you're, you're pretty happy to be going first. But this is kind of a weird scenario where both players have whiffed on their big threats early. Mm -hmm. And both players... Uh, well, no, no, never mind me. I was just like... Watching the uh, the potential draws for... Wait, this is Eco, right? So Tice has no big game hunter. Yep. And, but he has the potential Shadow Flame. Mm -hmm. Uh, he should turn up the two watchers mm, here. Yeah, yeah, this is a really strong play. If there's no big game hunter from your opponent here, oh, oh, well, wow. Never mind then, right? Yeah. So I was about to say, I mean, it's still true. If there was no big game hunter, then this is a fantastic play that starts to get you a ton of value on the board. But the the big game hunter come flying off the top for Tice just to to solve all his issues. What about Emperor instead of big game hunter? Oh, oh see, it was opting for that. And I think that's a, that's a really cool play. Let's see. Unless there's an owl being drawn. <laughs> yeah, I guess as from what you can see, there's no way on the board to deal with the Emperor, and getting two ticks of Emperor in handlock is, is generally game-winning in every matchup. Um, and it looks... Are we going to see just Emperors go to war here? He looked like he moused over the Emperor to play his own there, but... Mm -hmm. I don't know. You already have one AA on the board. You can play a second one and silence the 5-5. Five five. That seems pretty solid. Yeah, that seems solid to me too. I mean, the Emperor is really, really good in this situation when you have a Morganis in the hand, mm -hmm. Doomguard, the big game hunter for even more tempo swing, sure. and a one-mana owl. I mean, that's really insane. Because you gain so much so much um, tempo in your answers they are basically game winning by that mm -hmm. and but the problem is your opponent is getting the second tick also i mean the first tick is more important than the second one so i wouldn't blame him for going for his own emperor yeah. but at the same time you're building so much board and you play around a shadow flame of your opponent mm -hmm. because he would attack with the emperor into an ancient watcher yeah just shadow flame everything anyway yeah I mean, there's no there's no reason to attack but yeah you get my point right yeah yeah, yeah. Um, and he chose, his, chose to silence the Belcher and just directly take out the Emperor there, which I do actually like, opposed to just silencing the Emperor, because the Emperor was competitive against the 4-5 taunts that he has on the board, mm -hmm. whereas this Sludge mm -hmm. Belcher isn't. Um, so I can definitely understand going for that option instead. So Hellfire has merit to here. It's... I mean, uh, Hellfire has a merit. Mm -hmm. You Hellfire, you kill an one giant, two minions, you damage heavily two, two other one. Three other ones, so yep. you can check um, one of the ancient waters, ancient waters, waters with your Belcher, but then you still you're lacking that dark bomb to go through the ancient uh, other ancient water, and there's still one giant left. Uh, yeah, I was just about to suggest this play. The uh... Mm -hmm. Argus yeah, Shadow Flame play is actually a full ball clear. Oh, wow, is he going to favor face damage over clearing the eight three? Well, he has a Molten Giant in his hand, right? So. Yeah, that's true, but you know, from the same perspective, do you really value hitting your opponent in the face that much? Because you're just kind of accelerating their Molten Giant. So yeah, that's true. It's it's an interesting decision to be made. And tap Coin Emperor and then trade looks like the play here. Um, so like, I have no dispute that what he did was netting free damage. It was really, really likely these two minions were going to trade anyway. So mm -hmm. in every other matchup, I would you know go ahead and yes, yeah, sure, be greedy, hit the face there. But it's just a concern in the handlock mirror about do you really even want to hit your opponent in the face? Um, so yeah, it's an interesting decision from Tice, but um, the Emperor is going to have to be force force out a Hellfire here from Tice, but it's a pretty effective answer nonetheless, and he can follow it up nicely with Twilight Drake just to maintain the board. There's no owl for. Tice, oh, sorry for for Eco because he played already one, and the Morganis seems like a really strong play. The problem is there's a big game hunter. Right, and if he does play the Morganis, this entire play has been set up by the fact that he had two mountain giants on the board, and mm -hmm. neither of them got big game hunter because yep. Tice chose not to and went for the Emperor development instead. So there's the side Full product. Bluff. The side product of that, where he's convinced Ekop that he doesn't have the big game hunter in his hand, and he's picked up 
the best minion in the deck to big game hunter for it. Definitely, with no impact on the board at all. Because yep. usually when you play Malganus, you already have something uh, like a plan, let's say, with a Doom Guard from your hand, right? Mm -hmm. To deal like the finishing blow or something like that. Sure. And in this situation, this is like basically you throw a big minion, oh, waste a turn, and your opponent gains a turn and gains a minion. So Tice did favor the face damage earlier. Obviously, face damage now is more relevant than it was earlier. You know, the mm -hmm, difference between mm -hmm. the difference between 17 and 13 is so much bigger than the difference between 23 and 20. And not just because it's one more, but you know, because you're actually um, activating uh, actually impactful molten giant combos like molten giant shadow flame. Um, so I would expect to see him just pass turn here, and he does. But wouldn't you think that your opponent would play a Molten Giant for seven mana? For sorry, for um, yeah, for seven mana instead of Malganis? I don't necessarily think so. Um, especially if you if you you know if you followed the mind games along and you think your opponent thinks that you have no big game hunter. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, because your Molten Giants are going to get cheaper anyway. That Malganis was always going to cost eight. Um, so, you know, spending your 8 mana on an 8 mana Malganis seems like, you know, a relatively strong way to play out your hand because you can then continue to play any Moltens that you have for cheaper later on in the game. Um, so I don't think you can get a read that he has no Moltens in his hand from the, from the Malganis play particularly. Yeah, and now Dr. Boom has no answer because there's no big hunter left. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, do you really worry about that? You have... You won't even face damage go. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I was going to say, we can see what the boom bots do, and then we'll decide whether we're worried about the Dr. Boom. I think. Yeah, I just that's... wanted to say that the boom bots can be really dis <laughs> deciding how the game will develop this turn. Yeah. Um, again, as I mentioned before, eyes tend to light up when there's a Mortal Coil target on the board, but it looks like Tice is going to turn it down in favor of the Hellfire and just uh, trade the board out and replace his Twilight Drake, probably with a uh, Molten Giant and a Heal Bot. Uh, hi! Yeah, he doesn't have to be that scared at eleven. He can. You don't oh. have. To, you don't have to play that molten. Uh, sorry, uh, that. Uh, the heal bot. Heal bot. He can go yeah. with the Drake instead. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's even going to tap with it. I like this. Yeah. Play here. Biggest ball presence possible. I like this play. The only combination of cards that can kill you is a Doom Guard with a PO. Right, and he's even even just potentially to play around that, he's going to go ahead and use the taunt, which I think is totally fine. Um, I think a lot of players do use their taunts too liberally in handlock, but in this situation, those two minions are the biggest things that you're ever going to taunt for a long time. Um, so I don't mind them being taunted here. Definitely. Wow, this answer though. He has the owl, the mortal coil, and the big game hunter, just to absolutely rip this board apart. Yuck. That... And there was one Hellfire being played already. Yep. Uh, no, both Hellfires have been played already, in fact. Oh, yeah, right. Hmm. Um, well, that's not looking good for Tice, then. So what would you play with the big game hunter here? Would you play the Twilight Drake, or would you play the... Uh... Void Color. The Void Color. Definitely the Void Color. Yeah, when I... your opponent is so low, mm -hmm. and you can swing the tempo next turn with a free Void Color for damage, with, mm -hmm. with alongside two Defender Vargas, you most likely would win just next turn. Yep, I, I prefer the Void Caller here as well. Um, I think uh, Ecop is reconsidering halfway through. Um, so if, he, if he played the Twilight Drake, he should have played it before he was playing the Owl. Um, obviously, playing the Mortal Core doesn't matter because it cycles, but if he's playing the Drake, then... Uh, oh, he's actually going to go ahead and arm yeah, Oh, wow. Wow, this is a... That's really interesting. Because yeah. why would you turn it up when there's no way of handlock doing that much damage next turn. No, especially after you've already seen um, Two double, Hellfires, double Hellfire from your opponent right? and a Dark Bomb. So not yeah. only is that a lot of bursts gone, but the mere fact that they're playing double Hellfire means that there probably isn't a Doom Guard in the deck. Mm -hmm. By the uh, way, guys, still remember about the exclamation mark giveaway. It actually works. Go for it. <laughs> Stop encouraging Twitch chat to go crazy, Lothar. They should. Okay, fair enough. Um, yeah, very, very strange play. Just doesn't... I mean, I guess he develops kind of an irritating board that, you know, the efficient way to deal with that board would be Hellfire, and he's already seen both Hellfires gone, but, I mean, is it really worth not developing one of those powerful things that you have in your hand, the Void Caller and the Twilight Drake? I don't think so. Yeah, I agree with you here. I would have been much more threatening. Mm-hmm. 
So now, now? Is, yeah. it Ty, is it Ty? I mean, I don't know. I don't know what Eckhart's plan is. Uh, I mean, he went down such a different line from ours last turn that it's it's hard to stay in his mental state. Um, well, yeah. you can't really play the Doom God at any point of the game no. until you still uh, until you kill him. Yeah. That so at least we can like scratch one card from the hand <laughs> for being played. Sure. Uh, so no tap here, he's just going to go ahead and play out a Twilight Drake first. Does that mean he's intending to spend his entire 10 mana? Or is he just too scared to tap right now? I think he's too scared to tap. Like his um, turn last time was actually saying, okay, I'm worried about what we can do. Right. So I won't tap here. No, it looks but like no. he, he's, he's spending 10 mana. He's going to put the two big taunts down this turn. And maybe this was his plan in the long run. This way he gets to play them and immediately get the Argus value out of it. Um, but still, you know, these one of these two minions could have already been on the on the board last turn and, and attacking. So yep, seems reasonable. Uh, but he is now, I would say, in a very favourable position in the matchup. Uh, we do see the Iron Beak Owl, but there's two really high priority silence targets on the board, and he only has one owl to choose from. So, hmm. which one of these do you silence, Lothar? There's no Mortal Coil as a follow up. Right. So. I think it's even better to silence the Void Caller. Because yeah. you, you will deal with the 5-7 uh, Twilight Drake at some point. Wait, wait, wait. If you silence the Void Caller, okay. you can't deal with any of these creatures anyway. Because no. if you silence Twilight Drake... It's hidden behind the top. Exactly. Yeah. And that's for 8-10 damage. That's exactly lethal with Doomguard. Next mm -hmm. turn from hand. So unless you put a taunt on board right now, you're dead. Yep. Uh, uh, it looks like I mean, dead. it's the best. It's the best possibility. I mean, the best play to go for a win next turn, but it looked really bleak. Is it? I mean, your opponent has very deliberately played a Void Cooler this turn, and you've already seen Malganis. So, what demons do you think he has in his hand? It's a one. In, it's a one. Yeah, it's a one in two that he has Doomguard in his hand. If you're going to give him credit for having a demon. Mm -hmm. So, is it not right that turn to play around Doomguard? It seems like a reasonable consideration. But if you play around Doomguard, then you play just a Belcher. Mm -hmm. And the Belcher doesn't really achieve much against this board anyway. How do you win a hey, that's next fair. turn? That's fair. Right? Mm -hmm. That was the play to win, which I really love. Most players definitely don't do that frequently enough. Yeah, I absolutely agree with you. And I think if you go for the winning play, you will just increase your odds of winning the match in, in general. Right. So I would agree with the Dr. Bowman just being better play there. Fair enough. And now we'll be jumping to a matchup between Mage and Druid because Ecop is only left with the Druid. So I don't blame Ty's opening with the best matchup, I would say, if he yeah. plays Mad Scientist with Mirror Images. Um, uh, mirror entity, you mean, right? Uh, mirror entity. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Uh, uh, I think I think even without that, you are still slightly favored. I think this is still a good matchup for the for the mage. But yeah, mad scientist mirror entity is just one of the most powerful things you can do against druid. Um, they do have the Darnas Aspirant now, which is a nice counter to mirror entity. But they've kind of removed Chow from their deck to make room for that in certain ways. And Chow was already a really nice counter to Mirror Entity, yeah, so the, the, deck, the deck kind of stays relatively level as to its effectiveness against Mirror Entity. That's true, but at the same time, the Darnassus Aspirant can such <laughs> can make such a big mess with the Mage's um, yeah. meta. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, yeah. So he's going to choose to retain the coin here, either for uh, Flame Waker value or just to coin out a big 3-6 Water Ellie next turn. I would suspect that it's just to coin out oh. a 3-6 Water Ellie. But Next now... to Innovate Emperor. Wow. <laughs> but now, do you just flame wake a coin nothing? No. All right. Tice does not believe in the casino. He could have tried to snipe down the uh, the Shade of Naxxramas, but, you know, that's that's more of a, uh, a streaming play, right? Like, let's just go for it to make Twitch chat happy. I think the solid play is definitely just coin out the big 3-6 here. You should use the Shade to kill the Mana Worm here, right? Uh, just to at least give your Emperor a chance of living on the board. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's reasonable. Um, you know, if you're if you're forcing your opponent to use a removal spell from hand, be it a Frostbolt or a Fireball, then obviously you're slowing down his development as well. I think that's probably worth um, having your Shade pinged off. Maybe not. Because if he has Fireball, mm -hmm. 
the mana of him only grows by one attack. If he has more than one spell, mm -hmm. he, he would have to get two fire, uh, two frost balls to, to, to like be meaningful with that play. Without, I mean, with the mana of him. The mana of him, the mana of him to be meaningful in this situation. But I mean, he could just double trade into the into the emperor and just like play a second water elemental or something, right? Like, yeah, you, okay, you, yeah, that's a, that's a bit, uh, that's more important. Yeah, you're just you're just not giving your emperor any chance of living at all unless you kill them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Very good point. I really like that Tice um, puts more emphasis on keeping the frost bolts because they can be more tempo gain than the fi uh, the fireball in general. Right. Um, and they're also easier to use with the Flame Waker and the Archmage Antonidas that he both has in his hand. It's and Sorcerer's Apprentice. And Sorcerer's <laughs> Apprentice, yeah, okay. Yeah, so Frostbolts are looking like pretty great cards based on uh, Tice's hand right now. Uh, Flame Waker Frostbolt has to be, right? Um, does it? What's the other play? I was thinking about just Unstable Portal with Sorcerer's Apprentice and Frostbolt. Because next turn you have, you, you can develop the board more because the unsettled portal can be a free drop, right? Mm -hmm. And next turn you have um, your flame waker with frostbolt anyway. Uh, but you can you can kind of reverse that logic, right? Like he can do what you talked about this turn with a flame waker already consolidated on the board. Mm -hmm. So it, it kind of works both ways, and Flame Waker Frostbolt just seems like... It all really depends on the for... unstable portal RNG. It really does, yeah. And I... Because if you gain... Oh, oh! Kill it! Kill it! Yeah, all right, we got it. That would have been devastating if that well, if lived had through all attacks. of this. Yeah, I know, but if it had just lived through all of this, that would have been crazy. Yeah. Because uh, he would have been forced to play the Mirror Image to finally protect it, and uh, he, I'm pretty sure he wants to keep at least one of these spells in his hand for the Archmage Antonidas, especially since he can just slam it next turn if the Sorcerer's Apprentice lives. Why do we play the Mirror Image? What are we doing? Because uh, he, he wants to hold it next turn and just use it for uh, Archmage Antonidas. Okay. But it, those, those, those minions would be 1-2, and you play around Force of Nature. Yeah. So what's what's the one play that can Druid do to regain kind of regain tempo? It's only Force of Nature, and you play around that with the mirror image. Mm, I guess that's true. You're gonna be left with Archmage Antonidas and no cards in your hand. If you keep that mirror image and your Sorcerer's Apprentice dies, then yeah. you have no card to play next turn. That's fair. Because you can't play Antonidas. Like you know, like so when you when you're keeping the mirror image, right? I mean, can't you? Do if he spends this entire turn removing and shows that his best removal option was Force of Nature, can't you just play Raw Antonidas anyway? Isn't it just going to live on the board? Hmm. I'm not sure. I went. You would have played it anyway if you mirror image last turn, but then you would have min minions on the board because you you were protected from the um. Force of nature. Right. Yeah, I think that one's really, really close. Um, but yeah, if, if I was Tice here, I would just absolutely windmill slam the raw Antonidas here. Uh, looks like he disagrees. All right, it's fine. Still two minions on the board, and we talked about how minions are annoying for the Druid in general. So. Sure. Yeah. Um, but you know, I think. I think you're relatively confident that there's no Keeper in your opponent's hand, because Keeper was just a nice play alongside something else last turn, just to snipe down the 3-2. Um, but I absolutely don't blame him for this, for the way he's done it, and uh, it's paid off fantastically, because he's got to get the extra Mana Worm into play alongside the Antonidas with the spell. So this has worked out pretty nicely, and the Druid, who obviously was struggling for removal, having to use Force of Nature earlier, and letting mm -hmm, the Flame Waker mm -hmm. live for a turn on the board, is going to have to find a way to kill a, a seven health Antonidas through two uh, two health taunts, which is just not a thing that's ever happening. Yep, that's true. And that looks like a convincing board for the mage. It does. Um, so on Tice's side, he's just going to have to do some maths here when it passes back to his turn. Oh, um, why would you play? The, sorry for interrupting you, but why would you play Dandarus's Aspirant before drawing a card? Uh, oh, you have to get to, to yeah, ten yeah, mana. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. 
Um, so yeah, from Tice's side, he just has to work out whether he can just go all in and be secure, just fireball phase, fireball phase. Oh, he has three fireballs, right? Yep. So this yeah. is just lethal. Because of the Sorcerer's Apprentice, he can cast three fireballs. So this is just lethal, right? Yep, yep. it is. All right, cool. So Tice starts to claw his way back into the game. Like you said, this is the the best matchup. matchup. Yeah, that was almost a freebie. This is a really heavily favored matchup for the for the tempo mage. And you got a really really strong draw. Lots of early pressure into just enough late game beefiness with the Antonidas just to carry him through. Um, so now he's just going to have to to work a little bit harder with his with his other matchups. But and um, the other matchups are not looking that great. I mean, the warrior is still kind of favorite. Yeah. But warlock is not looking great at all. Right. Um, I think that it was. Let me get this right. Was Tice playing the classic handlock or the demon handlock? He was playing the classic handlock, right? He was killed by the Doomguard, and yes. we didn't see a Void Caller at all, right? Yeah. So I, I think the demon handlock has a slightly better matchup against Druid, just because you can, you know, make things happen with a with a tempo Void Caller on turn four. Just get a Doomguard onto the board, get a Jaraxxus onto the board, um, and just be competitive in terms of tempo that way against a Druid. Whereas the classic handlock, you know, the, the tap tap giant thing just tends to not work out too well against a, a druid that's playing such big aggressive minions against you every turn. That's true. Now we can see um, that Ecop is lacking any kind of mana acceleration. Any kind of mana acceleration. No wild growths, no Darnassus Aspirant, no Innovates. Right, and we do see that Hellfire, which is going to be a pretty nice play on turn four if uh, we see Shade come down, followed by uh, followed by Pilot and Shredder. Uh, he doesn't play the Shade. Well, he he's not going to coin he... it, right? Use uh, the, use the coin to give your Shade plus one plus one, and have no other turn next mm, turn because you lack you lack any kind of curve, right? And right. That's more important for the Druid to have the curve and keep the coin for like a half of innovate for turn eight with the combo. Sure. Um, so he's going to play the Mountain Giant here, and then Shredder is going to come down, and then it looks like Hellfire is looking pretty tempting, but he does also just have Owl Dark Bomb if he wants to let the Shade rock, but... I would say that you can't play the Hellfire now because you want the the, the, the Giant to be threatening, like, you know, and end the game in three hits. That's true. Basically. Yeah, so just Owl, Dart Bomb, and hit face with the Giant mm -hmm, is fine. Mm -hmm. After you see this not get big game hunted, I think you're pretty confident that this Giant can go some way to, to soloing the game for you. What about just um, just Belcher here? Uh, it's tempting, but if your opponent has a Keeper, right. then he trades for the Giant, and you lose a lot of firepower. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I just like the Owl, Dart Bomb play here. It's just so aggressive and it just forces your opponent probably if there's no big game hunter in hand it forces your opponent to do something like swipe and trade the shade into your mountain giant and then if he does that then you just get a free turn just to develop anything you want next turn you know lower third sludge belcher whatever you feel like putting on the board so it's just like a free turn bank eight damage on his face and then if this board gets cleared no big deal i still have follow-ups and i'm still ahead so mm -hmm, i just mm -hmm. really like the play And as we can see, Ekop, in fact, doesn't have any way to answer this Mountain Giant whatsoever. And he's forced to reveal the Shade just to uh, take out the Owl and reduce some of the uh, the value on the board for the Handlock. Well, this now looks like a good Owl Hellfire turn. It certainly does. And I think at this point, your opponent couldn't do four damage to your Giant last turn, or else he would have traded into it. Yes, so, so he can't leave, leaving five. it as yeah, yeah, exactly. Leaving it mm -hmm. as an eight-five now, it's you know it's safe against all the same things. And as and you wow. said, yeah, as you said, you know, you just want to value this Giant hitting him in the face three times. And it looks like that's exactly what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. but, but now, now the top, the top deck graph wow. will change the pace of the game. If that if that Giant has one more hit, yeah. That would have been the game already. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I would say Loatheb is coming down here just because it's so aggressive and it starts to threaten mm -hmm. your opponent so much. Okay, Drake is a nice pickup. Um, I was about to go on to say the only downside of that is that Loatheb yeah. is a really high value card for the late game. But um, wouldn't you favor the Loatheb because it's always sticking to the board? Yeah, I mean, there's 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 merit to it, but you've seen your opponent struggle to remove your stuff, and you've just seen one keeper used. So I think you know, there's one card that could be in his hand that answers this, and that's exactly second keeper. 
I think maybe that read is worth the utility of keeping the lower third just in case this game does swing around. Uh, but that's game next turn if he won't remove those minions or put a lot of taunts. Uh, or just play lower third, right? Oh, of course. Um, which is kind of the thing. Lower third is always like the emergency, the emergency button against Druid. You can always play it out and just buy yourself a turn and get some tempo on the board. And there we go. We do see the Lothar come down. So yeah, it is interesting. He certainly would have um, been much closer to pushing for lethal if he'd have played these minions in the other order. But but he didn't have anything to push for the lethal anyway. Right. So it might have been better yeah, with the Torah Drake. Yeah. I mean, the stickier minion might be dealing damage, but then, as you said, you're not defending yourself from the combo. And at the same time, you're not pushing for lethal because you're missing that Hellfire, that had Dark Bomb that you already played. Yep. Uh, so from Ekop's side here, if he's playing Druid of the Claw over one of these seven drops, I can only imagine he's he's charging face and going all in, right? Who's mm -hmm. he? I mean, hmm. What I mean, what other reason is there to play the Druid of the Claw over one of these bigger, uh, higher value minions? Because like the Ancient of War, um, I guess like the well, we have seen Ekop doing uh, different stuff, right? We have like in the previous game. But like the Ancient of Law here heals you for five, which is kind of the same thing as taunting for six points of health. You know, it's roughly the same thing. Um, but I guess you'd rather have the Ancient of Law in your hand, which is the reason to go for the Druid for Claw. Plus, you gain to get get uh, get to gain an extra health with the hero power. Because um, right now he's staring down lethal on the board from just an IMB cow. Um, but yeah, it looks like he's going to go for the heal play instead. And I think I like this play a lot better just to get the most expensive minion out of your hand. One Molten Giant, but it's of course not enough to play it like two. Yeah. But he has no mo double Molten Giants anyway. What are the options? You can play Belcher, which is nice, because you are sure that it will tank two attacks at least. Mm -hmm. mm. You can play Mountain Giant and Sun Fury Protector. There's no real reason you'd ever play a six mana Molten over a six mana Mountain, because generally at this point in the game, you're going to be playing your hand out. So the Mountain Giant is going to be more expensive and the Molten Giant is just going to get cheaper. Mm -hmm. um, so you'd always go with the... He's going to choose not to play the Mountain Giant this turn. And... All right, Belcher play with the Argus, gets to preserve his 6-1 on board. I like this. Yeah, yep. seems like the most safe, uh, the safest play here. Yeah. And that's a correct decision. Especially when you know that your opponent kept the coin as before, right? Right. So the reason to keep the coin before that was the fact that he has the combo already in hand. Yeah, and it preserves two more taunt givers in your hand as well. The only downside of this is that maybe you're resigning yourself to where this mountain giant is too slow because you played two more cards this turn. Um, so with the extra card draw next turn, the mountain giant's going to cost seven. Um, that might end up just being too expensive to play this game because you're going to be under a, a lot of pressure from this point forward. But um, maybe just one giant is enough to finish up the game, right? It's, yeah, it's very possible. Uh, he does have the two Force of Nature in his hand, so he can afford to use one here if he wants to, but it just, I mean, it's, it's trading one for one with a taunted Ancient Watcher. It doesn't seem fantastic. Wait. Bear form. Okay. He's gonna, That's interesting. He's going to go with double, a double five drop taunts. Okay. And just trade out the 2 4 into the 6 1, and then imagine just pass. Yep. Oh, that's not a bad, bad turn at all. The, um, the Hendrick will have problems to deal with that unless he would have a Shadow Flame Mortal Coil. Yep. Or a uh, Molten Giant Shadow Flame would do it as well. Um, it, it would, you know, it would take your whole turn. You'd get to tap with it as well. But I think, like, if you Molten Giant Shadow Flame this board with that board that you have consolidated already against a Druid, that is probably just game winning. So we would almost certainly see that play happen if he had it. Um, so I think when this board does not get Shadow Flamed, uh, Ecop will rule out Shadow Flame from from Tice's hand entirely, just because the Shadow Flame is so punishing here. Yep, definitely true. Um, but without the Shadow Flame, what's the best line of play here for Tice, do you think? I think there's really no, like, correct option. I mean, maybe not correct, maybe I just misspoke, but uh, like a safest option. Because right? mm -hmm. you you probably die to everything that your opponent will play. Mm. So you have to town up as much as possible. 
Ekop starting to uh, emote as the the rope appears, which is um, it's 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 not just BM. I mean, it is, but it's actually a legitimate strategy that a lot of players do. Because when the rope appears, your brain starts to fill with a million things, right? Mm -hmm. The rope and that's distracting. Yeah, the yeah. rope appears, and you suddenly have to make a snap decision between all the things that you've considered for the turn. So by adding that one more thing to like try and overload your senses, they're trying to make you make an inefficient decision. So um, there is some merit behind it. Uh, I don't believe this is enough to push through, is it? Uh, that's that's not it. There's no there's no in here. Especially with the uh, giant being a nine health minion, right. which is a pain in the bottom. Yeah. Wow, he's just straight up trading his entire Force of Nature Savage Raw combo for a taunted molten giant. That's and then you have to sacrifice. Well, not sacrifice because it will live still, mm -hmm. but you have to deal a lot of damage to your own druid to Mm-hmm. We do see that he is out of taunts from what we can see, and there is still another Savage Roar in uh, Ecop's deck. Is he? So. There's like a perfect combination of Mortal Coil mm -hmm. and Giant Sunfury Protector. No, I just mean from from Ecop's perspective, he clears the board of taunts. He's already seen a lot of taunts used. He's seen two taunt givers yeah, okay. and two belchers. So he might just be saying, okay, if I clear this board and if I draw my second force of nature, then I'll be in really good shape. But as you said, Tice's hand just contains the perfect arm. Oh, hello. Ooh. Wow, that is a that is a potentially game-winning draw here. But yes, it is. is. And you follow it up with Ancient of War. Yeah, absolutely. Wow, that's really. As a ten five, right? <laughs> Of course, uproot or riot. Yep. Chat is going crazy right now. As every as every fine upstanding Twitch chat member knows, there is only one acceptable way to play Ancient of War. Hmm. This tie still no, he used two owls already. Uh did he? Uh, first on the Palter Shredder, yep. second one on the, the Palter Shredder. Shredder. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. On turn uh, four and six. Yeah. Um, so... So what are the options here? I mean... Uh, I mean, that, that's, I think there's none. There's no option to kill that minion. There I don't is know. None. Unless he plays Siphon Soul. Which is pretty unlikely. That's a card that's been rotated out of most handlocked decks at this point. Um, it's always been a pretty horrible value card. It was just kind of a card that was necessary to play in handlock. Um, but as more good cards have appeared for the deck, it's started to become less and less important. Um, chooses, yeah. chooses to tap, so he's not going with the double heal bot play this turn. Uh, so it looks like we'll just see one Molten and one heal bot come down. Don't see any other line of play here that looks particularly promising. Yep, and yep. that leaves 9, 11, 17 damage on board, 18. 18 so... with the hero power. Wild yeah. Rogue cannot hit Savage Raw because he won't have enough mana to do it. So I don't think there's any lethal draw this turn. And if there's no lethal draw, then Ecop has to be defensive. Right, because there is an 8-8 on the board that threatens just to absolutely solo him. Um, and it will survive Hellfire as well. So if the other minions are able to trade into the um, Ancient of War and then something like a, <laughs> like a health I just wanted to say that the inner will be for sure drawn by the Wild Group. That's always <laughs> happening. Always. I just, you know... <laughs> so yeah, we're going to have to see a defensive force of nature here because that yeah. giant being on the board is way too scary. Um, with that giant on the board, things like Hellfire just become way too dangerous. And we know there's a Hellfire left in the deck. More importantly, Ecop knows there's a Hellfire left in the deck. Uh, so we're going to see a defensive force of nature here to try and tidy up some of this mess. It's still not horrible for Ecop because he has the Ancient of War still on board. Right, and he knows it sticks as well because he's yes. both out. So. But at the same time, it's not really appealing. No. Because your opponent is almost on full health. He didn't use the second... Um, the second heal bot. Whew. Sludge Belcher is a pretty nice looking draw. Yes, it is. Um, he does have the option for the board clear here, but it would mean no development of his own. And that's horrible. And that's absolutely... yeah, exactly. That's just not the play. So, Belcher heal bot looks pretty solid. Um, I think you know if this game goes long enough that you're going to outvalue the Druid at this point when they're completely out of combo options. If you're just playing minion for minion, then uh, generally you're going to do better. 
and at some point you already have six damage right now that's going face so all you have to do ever is get one minion to connect with his face and you have lethal mm -hmm. that's awkward for ecop i mean the draw that he get he got two times in a row mm -hmm. completely uh, uh, not relevant at all right i mean apart from the fact that emperor is a five five body and that's still a good fact that unfortunately Means it's... game, right? No. Is it? Uh, mm, no. No. The, five, the, 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 the Ancient of War is 5-5. Five, five, right? Yep. So. so one minion still has to go into it, or the Dark Bomb has to go into it. And if the Dark Bomb goes into it, like, you can't, like, basically there's no way of the minions attacking face before you Hellfire, is yes, the point here. exactly. But he can tap into... What else can he tap into? Mm, he used both Defender of Argus. Mm-hmm. And both Sunfield Protectors. So but he didn't get pretty solid though. 512 and 14. Savage Roar is of course lethal next turn. Yep. And you know your opponent has been holding cards as well. Uh, he didn't play the card that he... I mean, they haven't been held for long, but if, for example, he didn't draw what we know is the... In... He didn't play what we know is the Innovate that he drew off the Wild Growth last turn. Uh, so you know there is potential for things like Savage Roar to be in his range. And a swipe. That's uh, 11, 12 damage, 13 damage. Mm -hmm. That's not enough. Nope, not even close. And this Sylvanas just threatens so heavily to, to make an impact on the board here. He's basically locked out of playing Emperor Thorasan this turn just because it's so terrifying. Um, yeah. if, the, he... if there's a way of clear uh, of clearing the boom bot, yeah. he will for sure take the 7-7. Seven, seven. And then you have no answer to that. Mm -hmm. And you basically lose the game. Um, so Sylvanas, really important draw for Tice there. Just puts so much pressure and so much tension onto this board, which is, is what Sylvanas does. It basically um, locks up board states in a way that require a resolution. And generally, like when you're ahead in the game, as Tice is now, that favors you so heavily because your opponent can't really like leverage plays on the board to fight themselves back into it because the Sylvanas just threatens to, uh, to do too much. Mm -hmm. So he's just going to deal with it now. straight away. Actually, that's also not really that great because the boom bot might deal phase damage right a lot. that's very true that's very a lot. true oh, 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 oh. Ooh, not quite with the dark bomb already gone that's not relevant i think he's well aware that the only burst damage left in the deck is one hellfire uh, so i think he's pretty safe here and he's actually in a pretty solid position right now with a 5-5 five, five and a 7-2 on the 17 damage next turn, so Tice can't really tap. Nope. Um, and I, I would expect Tice to be aware of that and realize that the tap leaves him dead to swipe. And then Twilight Drake Emperor seems like a reasonable play. He's just going to Hellfire. Okay. Hellfire to kill the 7 2 and play down his own Emperor. Well, Ancient of War, uh, sorry, Ancient Watcher is basically useless in this matchup for now. <laughs> but that is also useless. <laughs> Second innovate. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Soon left <laughs> without an option to develop the board. That's so painful, Eco. Turn 10, three cards in hand, hero power face. Big, like big play. Oh, wait, there's one more Sunfield Protector. I'm wrong. There's a Sunfield oh, wow. there's, there's the Shadow Flame as well. So any board that his opponent does develop starts to get threatened by the Ancient Watcher being Shadow Flamed as well. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, you know, even. It, it would be hard to imagine. Um, Tice putting Ekop in any range where, oh my god, these draws. Really wow. nice. Wow. Wow. Uh, at least the Ancient Water can attack because two hours were already played. Right. And again, you, you now you've seen the second Hellfire, you think your opponent is completely out of damage, but that big game hunter gets absolutely windmill slammed this turn. Almost all the cards! So what is the last card? Should he even be tapping here? Yeah, I'm, I'm wondering about that myself. Yeah. I mean, we don't know what the last card is. Maybe it's Jaraxxus. Right. And Jaraxxus is basically three additional damage. That's true, yeah. So if he knows his last card is now Jaraxxus, then the tap is correct, because he guarantees drawing it with uh, nine mana available to play next yes. turn, and then secures lethal. Yeah, that's absolutely right. I will see in a second, unless Ecop will just suicide. I mean, sorry, concede. Uh, I doubt it because the Ancient of Law actually keeps him alive here reasonably. He knows that the only card he can possibly die to at this point is Jaraxxus. 
He's been keeping count of things like double dart bomb, double hellfire that have already been used. Um, so I think if the Ancient of Law heals himself and just hero powers up and goes to nine, he might actually feel relatively okay about this match. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, hopefully for Tice's sake, the last card is Jaraxxus and that should uh, just come down and seal the game because uh, four plus two plus three is uh, unbelievably nine, Lothar. Hmm. I'm really wondering what didn't we see this matchup? Like any kind of card that we didn't see, maybe a second Shadow Flame, but... He was I playing two he... Hellfires, though, so he drew a couple. Wow. Uh, why? Cards. And he could see that. What was he looking for? I have no idea, and I would really love to see what was the last card. For yeah, Tice. me too. I would really love to know that. Uh, I mean, I can ask him, right? Yeah. But I'm not sure if it's on on, uh, on any communicators right now when he's playing on the iPad. Also, is he going to want to reveal what that last card is to the stream playing in a $5,000 tournament? I don't know. Uh, yeah, okay, I'm just not gonna ask him. Because, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, from his perspective, it's nice, right? Because that last card could be anything, so... Yeah, it might be Jaxus, it might be even... Doomguard. <laughs> sure. <laughs> there's, no, there's no reason to play Doomguard in the... Random, old... random one-off Doomguard in Handlock, seems legit. Um, so, we have... 2-2, two, two, and the final matchup comes down to the player's remaining decks, which is Druid versus the Patron Warrior. Uh, have we seen Tice play Druid this set yet? Remind me, Lofa. We haven't, right? No, we haven't. Uh, I mean, Tice is not playing Druid at all. Oh, sorry, I had it backwards. Yeah, Tice is playing the Patron. So have we seen it? We saw Ecot play Druid last game, and we didn't see a Harrison Jones get drawn. Have we seen Harrison Jones? We saw it in the first game, right? That's... No. Uh, we didn't see it in the Ecops game. No, okay. So he drew a lot of his deck last game, and we didn't see the, the Harrison Jones get drawn, so it seems relatively likely that he's not playing it. Um, and as we saw in the previous series, Harrison Jones just one of the most powerful swing cards in the game uh, when you hit it against a Patron Warrior, because Death's Bite is just the linchpin of the entire deck. You know, people people talk about you know, the Warsong Commander and the Frothing Berserker and potentially the Emperor being the the overpowered cards in the deck, and while that's probably true, none of it would work without the linchpin of Death's Bite holding it together. Yeah, even if that will be a 4-mana Archon Grouper, that wouldn't work. No. <laughs> nope. Who knew that Whirlwinds would end up being so powerful? Wow, double shade. Well, that's painful. Yep. There's no way that the uh, Warrior player can deal with those shades unless he's playing Brawl. Mm -hmm. And we all know Tice is European, so that's not the case. <laughs> and the only way that Tice can outrace Ecop right now is to play Emperor with the full combo of Frothing Berserker in his hand already. This. And this looks really grim because there's a turn for Emperor. You attack, right? Do you? I mean, don't you? Is the Patron Warrior going to clear this entire board? No, no idea, but uh, but you have Savador in your hand. Right, but if one of these minions is dying, it's Emperor Thorasan, right? Probably true. So, yeah, maybe... Yeah, yeah. So it, isn't the damage from the Shades just free this turn, and they'd still be there next turn regardless of whether you attack or not? Like, are you playing around in a rage, execute Death's Fight? Is yeah. that what you're playing around by not attacking? I mean, that's, that seems ambitious, right? But now with double Savage Roar, you definitely not attack. Uh, yeah, now you've drawn the, the second Savage Roar, you do actually get rewarded for your play, but he's going to choose to reverse exactly everything we say, Lothar. <laughs> okay. But, I mean, this is the situation that he set up last turn, right? He has. Yeah, but I would just charge the Druid of the Claw. Yeah, exactly. But... Because there was no Death Spite, so right. why would you play that in Taunt mode? Right. It's your charge menu will deal 8 damage right now. And you would, you would, might even charge with everything because there was no death spite, right? And kill him with double savage roll right now yep. because that's six fight. Uh, wait, six damage, eight damage, sixteen. I mean, that's lethal anyway. Yep. But you would have more damage with the charge creatures last turn. Mm -hmm. Is it? Wait, it's twenty nine, right? Twenty nine. So that's 16, 16 20, 25, 15, 31. 31, yeah. Yeah. Sixteen plus fifteen. Yeah. Okay, so that's game. Ecop advances. <laughs> right. Shades of Max Ramus, ladies and gentlemen. What a card. That's a lot of damage. Um, but yeah. It... And he could have dealt 5-9, um, 13 damage less than. Right. 
And he, he, could, he could have he could have dealt seven damage the turn before. <laughs> I mean, anyway, um, GG. <laughs> yep. Uh, GG to Ecop. He's winning his uh, round of sixteen match and advances to round of eight when he will be playing against type exclamation mark bracket click. Yeah. And uh, let me see, Ecop. Where is Ecop? Ecop is here. So we're playing against Orange. Mm. And Tice is unfortunately saying goodbye to this tournament because it's single elimination and we'll be having a little break and after the break we'll be going to the match between Roger and Cypher and then we'll have after that Noria versus Tom 602229 and then Stan Sivka versus Ostkaka. So don't go anywhere, we'll be right back. <laughs> 